Hello again. This is Katsuyuki Wakubayashi in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Bucknell University. Many of you are familiar with our video from a couple of years ago on the solid state shield polarization facility on our campus. This new video tour serves as a sequel to the first SSSP video. This time, we'll show you our newest invention called the solid state melt extrusion that we have recently developed in our laboratory. Large scale continuous processing of polymeric materials often employs a method called twin screw extrusion, where the materials are heated, melt mixed, and pushed through a die. SSSP, on the other hand, applies shear and compression in the solid state to produce a powdered output. Our solid state melt extrusion, or SSME for short, is a technique that combines solid state shear pulverization and conventional melt extrusion in one process unit. The technique is designed for mechanochemical modification of polymers, compatibilization of polymer blends, and filler dispersion in polymer nanocomposites. It is a simple, effective, environmentally benign, and industrially scalable process. Working with me on this video tour are two research assistants from Lewisburg High School. I'm Bronson Furster. And I'm Tim Serenka. Now let's begin. Here we are in the Polymer Processing Laboratory, located in the basement of Brake Iron Engineering Building where the SSME system is housed among other advanced polymer processing equipment. The SSME instrument is a custom modified 25 horsepower twin screw extruder manufactured by Krauss Maffei Burstorf Corporation. It employs 25 millimeter diameter co-rotating intermeshing screws with an L over D ratio of 35. The same instrumentation is also used to run conventional twin screw extrusion and solid state shear pulverization. In fact, the switchover between TSE, SSSP, and SSME can be quite simple and fast. The barrel has seven zones that are divided into three sections. The materials are fed at the upstream hopper in zone one, then experience solid state pulverization in the chilled section of zones two and three. The pulverized materials go through the moderately cooled transition zone 4 before undergoing melt mixing and extrusion in the last section of zones 5 and 6 and the die. Note that each zone has an independent temperature control. The low temperatures in the pulverization and transition zones are maintained by the recirculating ethylene glycol water mixture, which is kept at negative 12 degrees centigrade by a 10 horsepower capacity industrial chiller. On the other hand, the melt temperatures in the extrusion zones are provided by the conventional electric cartridge heaters. The materials are fed at a constant rate using individual volumetric feeders. Note that this is the only location where the materials are fed or co-fed. No additional side ports are present. The output of the SSME process is in the form of continuous molten polymer strands, similarly to that of conventional extrusion. The extrudate is typically cooled in a water trough, air dried, and pelletized for storage. Alternatively, one can explore the option of direct, subsequent processing of the extrudate into different final product forms. Inside SSME, materials undergo two different mechanisms. In the pulverization zone, significant levels of shear and compression lead to fragmentation and fusion of the polymers in the solid state. Depending on the processing parameters and the type of materials, different phenomena such as chain scission of polymers block copolymer formation between different polymers and exfoliation and dispersion of fillers can occur. The extrusion zone heats the pulverized materials into a melt state where rigorous kneading and intimate mixing take place. As a result, such additional phenomena as fine dispersion of blend phases and filler particles, as well as degassing can be applied to the materials prior to exiting as an extrudate.
The SSME process can be controlled by several parameters, which can be tweaked individually or tailored in combination to achieve desired performance in the product. The most important parameter is the screw design in each of the pulverization and extrusion zones, which can be set up to give mild or harsh shearing or kneading action, as well as drive the materials forward or backward within the barrel. Because of the modular nature of the screws, a wide range of designs can be created for different purposes. The relative zone lengths of chilled pulverization and heated extrusion can be varied as well. Other key controllable parameters are screw speed, feed rate, and barrel temperatures. The overall degree of mechanochemical effects by the SSME process can be represented by two universal process variables. The first is the residence time of the SSME, which is the average time that materials spend inside the barrel. The second variable is specific energy, which characterizes the amount of mechanical energy input per gram of product. A fundamental understanding of the interrelationships of processing, structure, and properties is currently underway. I hope you enjoyed this second video tour of the series and discovered extensive possibilities of the solid state melt extrusion process. If you have not watched the original solid state shear pulverization video, I highly recommend you to check it out. If you have any questions about our laboratory or the SSSP and SSME processes, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching.